Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth from Things From Another World, also known as Teapot.com, here for your weekly Wednesday new releases video. Josh is out on vacation this week, so I'm doing it all by my lonesome. Um, there's a lot of great books out, um, so I'm going to start with the one that depressed and outraged me. I've got uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 8, Number 39. They told you that someone big was going to die, and someone big died. And in a way, it felt really unsatisfying and unheralded, but sometimes that's just the way death works. Actually, there's two deaths in here, if you, if you really look at it. I'm not going to send you any spoilers, but this is quite the issue. Everybody kept talking about how Buffy 39 was going to be this big thing that's going to outrage everyone, and congratulations, Dark Horse, you succeeded. This is going to do it. Next up, I've got Heroes for Hire number one. Um, if I had a pick of the week, this would probably be it. Sometimes introductory, you know, first issues of comics can be a lot of exposition and kind of clunky. This just sails into place. This book runs as smoothly as the Heroes for Hire themselves. If you don't know the premise, there is um, a mysterious uh, control whose identity is hinted at and you kind of figure out, you think you know who it is at the end, but there's a twist. Anyway, she's calling up different heroes for hire at different times during the evening, slotting them to do specific tasks that work with their specific powers and abilities, and basically just calling in freelancers all night for different jobs. And it's great, it's funny, it's got a lot of awesome, yet kind of undersung characters like uh, Falcon and uh, Nova and stuff like that. But I really had no expectations for this book. I think it's great. My other favorite this week is Ant-Man and Wasp, number two. Um, I love Tim Seeley's Hackslash, but I think I love him even more. Like, uh, like kind of unleashing his own personality for, the, for you know, Ant-Man, who's this kind of foul-mouthed yet hilarious. He's kind of like Deadpool, but dirtier and more grown up in a weird way, but he also does great things for Hank Pym, who's kind of a, a stuffy character who's been misused and kind of uh, undervalued, and he's, he's taking these undervalued or perhaps these characters that haven't been used to their full potential, and he's making pure comedy gold. This is like the old-fashioned 80s buddy movie, so pick it up. Next, I've got a what if Iron Man demon in an armor. What if Tony Stark was Doctor Doom and vice versa. This too, I sound like a broken record, but this was a lot of fun. The what ifs are great. Just people just kind of let loose and they have no continuity issues. They got they got nothing. And then there's part one of a four part series. Um, what if uh, Deadpool was uh, possessed by Carnage? It's actually called The Man with the Modoc Butt, and it's fantastic. Then we've got a slate of kids' books. We've got Boom Studios, uh, Disney's uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, number one. I was very glad to see these guys back. It's all your favorites, Gadget, Chippendale, Monty, everybody, Zipper. And it's just classic adventure. It looks just like the cartoon. It reads just like the cartoon. So it's perfect for kids and for slightly more grown-up fans of the original series. Then we've got... Looney Tunes 193. If you are looking to pick up some Christmas comics for the kids on your list, you really can't go wrong with a Looney Tunes Christmas special. This, again, was just like reading or watching a lost, like, cartoon episode. It's gorgeous. It's awesome. The artwork is great. It has all your favorite characters. Pick it up. If you've got a reader who needs something a little more substantial, we've got the DC Super Friends Head of the Class Trade. And again, these are all of the, the classic characters. The artwork is just so like dynamic and sharp. The writing is funny and witty and great for kids. And then the last thing is not great for kids. I've got A Home for Scared People, uh, the latest uh, book from, uh, from Chris Onstead, the latest Akewood book. Uh, if you have not picked any of these up, they are great, and don't be put off when you first see it. The artwork is very spare and simple. It's done on a computer. It's very, like, black and white. It's got, 
you know, anthropomorphic dogs and cats. But this is one of the funniest damn series I have ever read. I work here in Milwaukee. I often go for lunch at the little Mexican place across the street. I bring one of these books and everybody looks at me weird because I just sit there and laugh while I'm eating my tacos. And the best part is because the artwork, you'd have no idea of people just walking by how foul and filthy minded it really is. It looks totally innocent and yet this is some of the most hilarious stuff you can read. So that's what we got this week. I'm going to be out next week, so you'll have Josh all to yourselves. But I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, as usual, you can hit the red arriving this week button on any page on our site, or if you're on YouTube, we'll have a little link below. Goodbye.